No, it was a gorgeous language, but he was talking, he was speaking to me. I don't speak Portuguese. Um, anyway, he is an amazing uh, graphic artist, multimedia journalist, um, uh, has a background in education. He was uh, uh, the graphics director at uh, Epoca uh, in Brazil and all kinds of other things. He's just really smart, so here he is. Well, hello, I'm Alberto Caro. I would like to thank, Ros thank Rosenthal and the University of uh, Texas for having me again. I spoke, this is the third time I believe that I speak at this conference and it's always a great, a great experience. Actually, my short presentation is going to be like a follow-up to uh, Brian's because some of the points that he made are really interesting and really important and, and I really care about them, which is that for making a visualization or an information graphic uh, uh, appealing to readers, first of all, you have to make it useful. Uh, one of the uh, core ideas in my courses at the University of Miami, where I am teaching right now, information graphics and visualization, is that an information graphic is above, uh, above all a tool, a tool for understanding. But it's also a tool for presenting information and also for exploring the information. Those are the two sides of information graphics. And there are certain trends, certain trends in information graphics and visualization that worry me a little bit uh, today. In the past, information graphics used to be mostly about editing information down. So you got a lot of data, a lot of information, and then you uh, cr try to cram it into a presentation and you, you, know, you, you dump it down. You, you, you just edit it down. And that's an example. Is, that's a very recent example because that trend of dumping data down has, is still in, in, very, in very good health. And that worries me because this is the presenting side of information. This is just presenting information to readers. But we are not allowing readers to explore the information, to explore the data behind all those graphics that you are creating. So this is a traditional kind of information graphic that I had to deal with when I was working in, working in newsrooms. Today, we have the opposite trend which is basically that, and this is gaining momentum, as I say there, that because data is increasingly available and we have the tools to handle that data very easily and to process it, we end up having things like these that are basic, and this is an extreme example, which is basically data art. It's not data journalism, it's art. It shows the connection, the cross-references in the Bible. And, and don't get me wrong, I think that this is extremely beautiful, but it has to do with what Brian said before. This is not really journalism, because it doesn't really help you understand anything. It's just a beautiful presentation of data. It allows you to explore the data if you know what the data is about beforehand. So if you can bring some previous knowledge to the table, you will be able to understand what this is. But as, I, as long as I am not very, I, I'm not a very good reader of the Bible, I don't really know what this thing is about. I don't really care. So, but we see this in the media. Today, if you go to the New York Times, for example, you will see things like these, and this is an extremely beautiful, extremely nice presentation. And my first reaction when I saw it, it's called, the, it's called Mapping America. It's basically getting all, data from, all the data from the research census and just cram it into a beautiful map built on Google Maps, and it's very beautiful. And my first reaction when I saw it, it was that, you know, this is extremely cool. And it's, I, I started exploring it, etc. But after five minutes, my reaction was, so what? What, I, what is this useful for? I just went looking for my neighborhood. I saw the data from my neighborhood, but it didn't allow me really, really to compare with other neighborhoods or to uh, you know, find the structure of the data. It, doesn't, it didn't allow me to rank neighborhoods or to compare one thing to the other. It didn't tell me, any, tell me anything beyond what I was seeing about my, about my neighborhood. I didn't get any story. So in some sense, there are many designers out there and also many uh, uh, programmers that are forcing readers to become their own editors. And journalism is about reporting. We are doing data reporting. But in data journalism, I believe that the editing process is even more important than the reporting process, particularly in these times when data is, is increasingly available. So we have to become editors in some sense. We should not just show readers data and throw data to the readers, but beyond that, we should also extract the meanings from those data and explain what those data means. That's what journalism is about uh, in the future. We have to help readers somehow. And we have to create layers in our information graphics. We have the presentation layer and we also have the exploration layer. The previous infographic was all about Exploration. You just throw those data into your readers and you let readers figure it out. 
You let the readers navigate. That's exploration. Readers extract their own stories from those data. But we, but we also have to present some sort of summary of that data beforehand. And we have to explain readers how to navigate that uh, presentation beforehand. We also must embrace complexity. And this is something that all time infographics artists don't really understand, that complexity is something useful sometimes. Showing all those data, the complexity of the data is very useful and very interesting. But you have to arrange it in a way that the human brain can understand. It's also appropriate to use novel graphic forms, interesting looking, you know, innovative kinds of infographics that you see in a computer science academic paper. You saw it the other day and you want to apply it to your own work. Well, that's great. But then you have to think beforehand, is this something that adapts to the data? Is this something that adapts to the story? Is this something that will advance the story, that will get the message through? You have to think about that also as well. There is, a, a, there is a motto or a, a, a mantra that was a, a pushed out by Ben Schneiderman in 1996 called the, information, the Visual Information Seeking Mantra. You will find it over the, over the internet. Schneiderman has written broadly about information visualization I think that, I, and I think that this sentence summarizes what information visualization should be about and how to balance out the presentation layer and the exploration layer. First of all, you present a summary. First of all, you overview the data. What are the most important points? What are the main things that I should extract from those data? How I use this application? That's the presentation layer. And once you have shown that to readers, once you have presented readers with the most important points of your data, of your story, then you allow readers to navigate the story and get to the exploration side of the story. You let them zoom, you let them filter, you let them see all the details of the information. But you cannot have, or you should not have, one thing without the other. Both are equally important. How to do that? Well, in the past, I'm not going to show this project, but basically this is a project that I made with my team when I was working in Brazil. I am, I am in Miami right now, but until uh, December 2010, I was working for Epoca magazine in Brazil that belongs to a global global group of communication. And we, I built a small data team and a small infographics team. And we put out a lot of, a, a lot of very interesting projects, in my opinion. One of them is these. And this is a project, if you, if you Google it, it's called a Telefone Vermelho, Red Telephone. It basically summarizes how much Brazilian congressmen and congresswomen spend a year on telephone. And those numbers are basically outrageous. Actually, when we, when we published this, um, this infographic, it created a national roar in some sense because they spend so much. Readers were not really aware of how much money those people spend on telephone uh, 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 over a year. It's just a huge number. But, and this graphic uh, it shows you the two sides of data, it shows you the two sides of visualization. First of all, you have the presentation layer, the summary layer, how much those people have spent in total. And that's 13 billion reais, which is around $6 billion combined, all of them, in a year, which is a huge number. When you transform that number, and this also belongs to the presentation layer, when you sell to, you say to readers, well, that's the amount of money they have, they have spent uh, uh, through one year, in the last year. When you divide that by the average cost of a local phone call, a Brazilian phone call, well, it turns out that if you want to spend that amount of money talking on the phone yourself, you will pick up the phone today, and you will end up your conversation 300 years from now. That's the reason why the, head, the headline, the main headline, headline of the graphic is 300, 300 years of phone talking, because that's the main idea of the graphic. So that's the presentation layer of the graphic. And then after that, you allow readers, and that's the, the part over there, you allow readers to look for their own represent, representative for their own congressman. So you can click on those balls, you can compare one congressman to another congressman, you can look for a specific political party, or you can look for a specific state in Brazil to, to see just those congressmen. That's the exploration layer of visualization. But you should not have one without having the other. Both are equally important, and you have to find out what the right balance between those two layers is in your graphics. So thank you so much. <laughs>